Ole Miss is going to end up going to the New Year's Six. It's going to take a little bit of time, but they'll end up getting there. We'll tell you how. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Hello, I am Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. And I genuinely believe that Ole Miss is going to end up in the New Year's Six, but there's a little bit of a path that Ole Miss is going to have to go to get there right now. If you look at this right here, like John Sokol, our resident fake news expert, um, talks about them being eligible for the New Year's Six even after losing. Georgia, Tyler Comas talking about bowl projections and the Claren Ledger. Um, Ole Miss's pre egg ball schedule is kinder, but the Rebels face familiar obstacles. They need to get ready and get up because the New Year's Six is possibly out there. And if you look at what Ole Miss sits right now, this is currently where they're projected. The bowls are they're the heavy favorite to end up in the Citrus Bowl, which, by the way, full disclosure. That's 50 miles down the road for me. That I'm exactly waiting for that. I mean, we would do a post-game show that game probably three hours after the game. It wouldn't be a quick thing because I, I, would, I would probably end up going to that football game. But if you look at that ESPN, both predictors on ESPN have Ole Miss playing Iowa in the Citrus Bowl. The Action Network has them against Iowa. The College Football News has them against Iowa. Fox News, Fox Sports has them against Iowa. Two people, the second-ranked one is CBS Sports and Jerry Palm have them playing Penn State in the Peach Bowl. Athlon Sports has them in the Peach Bowl playing Penn State. Now, the other two bowls that I put on the list is the Cotton Bowl and the Lyle Quest Bowl. We need to pay attention to them moving forward because haywire and this can happen as well. But let's start right now about the New Year's Six. And why do I think that Ole Miss will end up in the New Year's Six? Now, if you look at Missouri's schedule this season, their ranked wins is over Kansas State and over Tennessee. And they beat a number 13 ranked Tennessee. That's the reason they're sitting in the New York New Year's Six rankings right now. And their resume is them beating a number 13 ranked team and them beating a 20 Kansas State team. That is Missouri's resume. Their losses are to... Georgia, which you know, there's no shame in that one. That's apples to apples. And to LSU. And that is the key in this scenario. Ole Miss has a win over number 13 ranked LSU, who is going to be higher ranked at the end of the year, especially after Georgia, if Georgia takes care of business against the Tennessee Volunteers. That will leave the Missouri um, Tigers with only one top 25 win and a loss to LSU that Ole Miss defeated. They both will have lost to Georgia. Ole Miss will have beat it, defeated LSU. Missouri lost to LSU. And Ole Miss's only other loss is going to be to a top 10 team. Both of which on the road. So when it comes to resumes, when it all shakes out, barring Ole Miss doing something unforeseen against Louisiana Monroe or Mississippi State, the resume is going to elevate Ole Miss football over Missouri and get Ole Miss into the NY6. It's one of those situations if only three teams make it into the NY6, I think Ole Miss is the third team that goes in. Missouri can get into the NY6 if they take four teams. But as it sits Now, like I said, I've got no problem with the Citrus Bowl. The Citrus Bowl would be actually be a good trip for people interested in a lot of stuff going on. Because down here in Orlando as well, the Under Armour All-American game is happening. So you could go 
to the citrus bowl and do all of your citrus bowl work and, and just completely blow out that coverage. And in my case, get to meet a lot of people that I've talked to over the course of the year. And then you get to go to the Under Armour All-American game where Camarion Franklin is, where Braylon Bernstein is going to be signing his LOI. And that would be a perfect storm for people that want to cover the game because the way it's set up right now is a lot of these people are going to have to potentially go to the Peach Bowl because I do think right now the Peach Bowl is the leader in the clubhouse um, for the New Year's Six game that Ole Miss will end up at. Um, against Penn State. I, I do think Penn State could potentially be there, but it all depends on how the end of the season goes. We're, there's still a lot of water left to flow under the bridge. There, there's a chance that the Florida Gators could rise up and just shock the world and take care of the Missouri Tigers this weekend. There's a chance the Tennessee Volunteers can beat the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, you can't use transitive property. What happens? Georgia has slept walked through 80% of the season. Makes sense that they would probably do it again. So we'll see exactly what happens. Ole Miss, if it goes to chalk, they're over an 80% probability favored over ULM and Mississippi State. Ole Miss is probably at, what, 90% to win both of those games at the moment. And you have a situation to where Missouri is likely going to win their last two games as well. They have the Florida game. They have the Arkansas game. So then you have to find out you're you are going to have an probably an eleven and two Alabama team that isn't going to make the playoffs that potentially could end up in the Orange Bowl um, as the number five ranked team. Um, you have Missouri who is ten and two. You have Ole Miss that's going to be ten and two. The narrative that everybody has had over the course of this year of that the SEC is down. Just not true. It's not true. LSU and Tennessee were down. That's what made the national perception of the SEC being down, is LSU and Tennessee was not as good as we thought they would be. And South Carolina weren't, wasn't supposed to be good to begin with. LSU losing that Florida State game on national TV, in hindsight, it kind of makes sense. LSU's the fifth best team in the SEC. Maybe the fourth because you could argue that they could be flipped with Missouri. But you have Ole Miss at three. Nobody had Ole Miss at three at the beginning of the year. So the SEC naturally to them looked down, even while Ole Miss was winning game after game after game. Now that the rubber meets the road a little bit, it'll be really interesting to see exactly how Ole Miss can handle this. We're we're going to talk some more about the bowl games in just a little bit and why I think that Ole Miss has been having trouble recently in bowl games as well. And then we're also going to talk about what to watch for with the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks as well. But right now, I do want to let you know this show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. College football season is here, and this season Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff. Live each Friday, Locked On will go live at 11 a.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel, including this one. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every single day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday at 11 o'clock Eastern 
on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You will not want to miss it. All right, so we talked about in the first segment why I think Ole Miss is going to get a New Year's Six Bowl. And we also talked about why the Citrus Bowl really won't be a bad thing because of the coverage that Ole Miss fans are going to get because people being able to just go straight over. You're talking about the Under Armour game is like three or four days after the Citrus Bowl. And it's happening in the same place. You can do in practice over at Camping World Stadium and go on over to Wide World of Sports for the Under Armour practices. You do all of that stuff, you have a chance for a pretty interesting weekend. Um, if Ole Miss goes to the Peach Bowl, they can still do something similar to that, but it's going to involve a little bit different plan. Um, if Ole Miss goes to the Peach Bowl, I'm not going to the Peach Bowl. Um, I'm not going to the Cotton Bowl. If Ole Miss goes to the Camping World Bowl, the Citrus Bowl, yes, I'll go over for that because my intention is to get to the Under Armour All-American game and kind of go all in on that game with the Camarion Franklin, with the Braylon Burnside and things like that. Um, we'll have Brian Smith down here. We're probably going to work on some specialty type stuff that Locked On can do um, recruiting-wise. It should be a lot of fun. It should be really cool. But Ole Miss is set up in a furry bowl position that's honestly as good as they've had in the – other than a New Year's Six Bowl where they were going to the Sugar Bowl or the Peach Bowl. It's probably better than any of those to where the floor sitting right now, because it looks like Ole Miss is going to, if chalk holds, Ole Miss is going to win these last two games, is the Citrus Bowl. And if the Citrus Bowl is your floor, and I'm talking about Ole Miss as a program, period, okay? If the Citrus Bowl at the end of the year becomes your floor, you're as a program where you want to be, okay? We're not Alabama, we're not Georgia to where – NY6 is the floor. If Alabama went to the Citrus Bowl, it would be a disaster. If Georgia went to the Citrus Bowl, it would be a disaster. Why? Because their floor is the Peach Bowl. Their floor is the Cotton Bowl whenever it's not a playoff bowl. But a floor for Ole Miss and a program that is going to be a yo-yo type program because of the way they have to recruit because they can't just go out and get the five stars that Alabama and Georgia get. They can't, you can't recruit that way yet. Whenever you deal with the transfer portal, you're going to have to deal with some ebb and flow. So you're going to have a little bit of yo-yo type season. Like last year, they went eight and five. This year, they're going to go 10 and two or 11 and two, potentially. But it's the way that you have to do to get talent and accumulate these rosters at Ole Miss. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't let anybody tell you there's something wrong with it. Ole Miss has found a niche. We've been waiting on Ole Miss to find a niche, and they have. Some of these are going to work out. Some of these are not going to work out. But at the end of the day, if they have the medal and you can find your quarterback, whether through high school or the portal, however you get the quarterback is not important. But if you have that guy, the rest of them are going to follow. And we have seen that. We've seen the transfer portal not really work when you have a brand new quarterback. And we've seen the transfer portal really work when you have an established guy that everybody looks to. At the end of the day, probably just means you need a quarterback. Seriously. Anyway, I just got off on a little bit of a rant there. Um, bear with me there. So Ole Miss going into these bowl games is interesting. And Ole Miss in a bowl game, their offense seems seemingly is not as ineffective as it is during the season. And other teams seem like they can do a little bit better job against the Ole Miss offense. And I have a theory about that and everybody can pay attention. I think that it's real similar to the service academy type stuff. Like if you play a service academy in the middle of the season, you, they might get you. You might have a little bit of trouble. That triple option is weird. That There's stuff, they're blocking schemes. All of that can get you if there's only three practices for you to implement what's going on because you know you're probably going to win the game. But it can be tricky in the course of a normal game week. Ole Miss's offense, I think, is not necessarily the modern version of the triple option, but it uses so much deception. The blocking schemes are so weird. The keys, like we use your keys against you. If you're going right because the guard is pulling left, we're going to run right where that guy left, and that was a decoy move. 
I think over the course of a bowl game and having four weeks to get it done, they're just better prepared of what we're Ole Miss is doing. So in a bowl game, Ole Miss is even going to have to play better than they did during the regular season because the other teams are going to have more time to be dialed in with what they're doing. It's not a talent thing. It's, it's the Ole Miss does unique things thing. And what opens you up on September 30th is probably not going to fool you on December 30th. Just a thought as well. Anyway, do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-under, and more. We're going to talk about the Ole Miss Louisiana Monroe line in just a second. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season today. FanDuel, it's an official partner of the NFL. The Rebels play the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. This is one last chance to hear a home game by David Kellum and the Rebels hometown crew on Sirius XM. You can catch every play of that broadcast on Sirius XM or on the SXM app searching Ole Miss Rebels. Also, camouflage end zones. Lane Kiffin took a picture of what's going on. You can see that the end zones were camouflaged. You have no idea. The wor whatever word is in the end zone, I do not know, but it looked like a U. And so I'm I'm kind of interested to see exactly what the end zones are going to look like as well. I mean, should be a lot of fun um, this weekend. All right. The line for this game currently, oh, this line's going up, 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 up. It, it just is. It's getting out of control. Um, Ole Miss is favored by 37 and a half points. The over-under is staying at 61 and a half. Um, this might be a situation that Louisiana Monroe is just a really bad team. And, and, and then this is not me overlooking Louisiana Monroe or anything like that, but they are second in the FBS in losing streak. I think they've lost eight in a row. The leader is Vanderbilt for what it's worth. Um, but ULM lost to USM. ULM was USM's slump buster. Put that in perspective. It was their slump buster. USM went over there and won 17 to 7 against ULM in Monroe. And U USM's actually been a decent team after that. So yeah, it was it was their slump buster. ULM may very well be a very poor football team. So Ole Miss, like I said yesterday, needs to play clean, they need to stay healthy, and they need to bring their own energy. If that happens, Walker Howard is going to get into the football game. This might be a situation that Jackson Dart plays a half, Spencer Sanders a quarter, and then there's Walker Howard gets to all of the fourth quarter. I want Walker Howard to get reps. That That is my wish for this football game, is Walker Howard getting reps. Um, but we'll see exactly what happens. The what to watch for in this game. Um, will Quinshawn Judkins break his own touchdown record? His record is 16 rushing touchdowns that he set last year, obviously, because he's a sophomore. He has 14 now with two games left to play. Um, will he break it this game? And honestly, if you look at his overall touchdowns, he's at 30. The school record is at 37, which means Quinshawn Judkins over the next three games needs to average a little over two touchdowns to break the career um, touchdown record at Ole Miss at 37. So he needs 38 to break that record of Deuce McAllister. Um, ULM has lost eight games in a row. It's the second longest active streak. We talked about that behind Vanderbilt. And, you know, Ole Miss needs style points for the coming beauty contest with Missouri. They just do. We talked earlier about why Ole Miss gets that tiebreaker over Missouri. But in a leave no doubt situation, you need to make sure all of your edges are kind of where they need to be. And the way you can do it is by putting up a 51 to 10 against Louisiana Monroe, by putting up a 38 to 7 against Mississippi State to win those games convincingly. 
if you want to go to the NY6. Now, if you're okay with going to the Citrus Bowl, that's fine. I told you, it's it's 50 miles down the road for me, and it's probably convenient for that game and the Under Armour All-American game. It, it's probably very convenient for all of those things. I think secretly, Lane Kiffin's probably hoping to go Citrus Bowl over going to the Peach Bowl just because of that combination with the Under Armour game and him being in, in Orlando and being in the news with Braylon Burnside um, signing his um, national letter of intent, which I think that's a situation that he's probably going to do what David Snigman Ocean did, which means sign the first day and just kind of go through the motions at the game. Because I think that's what Egbin Ocean did as well. Ole Miss needs – Style points. I, I do feel bad for Monroe. I, I I do not think Ole Miss wants to leave starters into the game or anything like that. But Ole Miss needs to kind of be up for this football game. If if you want to go to the New Year's Six, if the Cotton Bowl or the Peach Bowl is something you're attaining to try and hit, you kind of need to be up for this game. This is a get-right game for Jackson Dart after he took his knock um, I think he um, kind of dinged his left shoulder, but he he's practicing normal. Everybody says he looks like his old self and all of that good stuff. But this is kind of a get-right game for him. You want Jackson Dart to have a good football game. You want Quinshawn Judkins to be a force in the red zone like he has been recently. And maybe this is a game that, like, Dayton Wade and Jordan Watkins and Caden Priestcorn. Maybe Aiden Williams, once you go to the backups with the Spencer Span Sanders and Walker Howard, you see some Braylon Brown. You see some Aiden Williams. Those guys. Hudson Wolf makes some plays, which he had a nice catch in the Georgia game. Maybe that becomes something everybody can point to. But this is definitely a game where style points matter. This is like the old BCS, honestly. Because you are fighting on the margins with somebody that is probably going to have the same record as you. Now, you have the tiebreaker, and if you look at resumes, you're going to win, but you can't give them reason not to take you. You don't need to give them an excuse. Let's say Missouri beats Florida 31-7, to and they just beat the holy hell out of the Arkansas Razorbacks. And then you look down, and there's like a 31-20 to against Louisiana Monroe, and a 31-27 against Mississippi State, you're probably not going to win that tiebreaker. So I do think it will be important for style points to become part of the equation. I'm not saying play to the spread. Ole Miss does not need to beat Louisiana Monroe by 37 and a half points. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that's at the point where like 48 to 13 covers or, or is right at the line. That's kind of the score they're predicting in this football game. But a 41 to 10, that would work. You know, a kind of get ready when you have a game five days after that. On Thanksgiving, you're going to be the only game that anybody sees. I mean, anybody that cares about college football, because I'm sure somebody's going to be watching the NFL game. But as far as college football goes, you're the dude. You need to go through and put a high number on the scoreboard so that when people are clicking around, they look over and it's like, okay, Ole Miss 41 to 13. Okay, that's good. That is what you need in this game. Now, State's going to be up. This is their Super Bowl, all of that stuff. But with the firing of Zach Arnett, you have entered this team on quit warning. You have a situation where the first bad thing that happens it's going to snowball. It's going to avalanche. You've seen this from teams every single year. And the same thing will happen with Southern Miss. I, I talked about this on yesterday's show, or maybe it was Monday's show. If Southern has a fast start, they're going to be all right in this game. They might win the game outright. The only way Southern beats, the only way Southern loses to Mississippi State, honestly, is if Mississippi State can front run a little bit, if they get off to a good start and Southern can't ever quite catch up. But if it's a situation where I don't know if Mississippi State's coming back against air for the rest of this season. And, and like I said, that place will be juiced a little bit for Egg Ball night because this is their Super Bowl. 
their fans care about it. So it'll be really interesting to see indeed. But I think winning the Egg Bowl is an important thing. We talked about yesterday, this is the time to bury Mississippi State, and this will be three out of four if you beat them. And they're coming in with back-to-back transition classes. You have a chance to completely separate from Mississippi State if you take it. That also starts with being healthy against Louisiana Monroe and taking care of business to get to that Egg Bowl to matter. Ole Miss needs to go to a New Year's Six game. Like I said, the Citrus Bowl, I'd be happy with the Citrus Bowl. I know some other people that might not want to go to the Citrus Bowl, but I would be happy with the Citrus Bowl because, like I said, it's 50 miles down the road from my house. And I can do that. I can do the Under Armour game. I can have a ton of fun. And at the end of the day, isn't all of this about fun? Isn't this all about you having fun as a fan. And there's going to be certain people that I'm not their cup of tea. I understand that. I'm not trying to get everybody like me. I don't even necessarily need everybody to listen to my show. But I'll never tell you not to listen to somebody else's opinion, to somebody else's perspective. This show's all about perspectives and commentary. This whole channel is. All the guests that we bring in on their show, we want to get their perspective, whether I agree with it or not. And I think that is what separates us from everybody else. I think everybody needs to listen to absolutely everything that's out there. Ben Garrett does a fantastic job with his podcast. The Oxford Exxon podcast, they do their own thing too. They have their nice little niche that they've found. You have David Johnson and Brad Logan do a fantastic job as well. Um, I'm sure I'm missing. Michael Borky does a good job with the Rebel Report as well. Listen to all those shows. You're running out of time for football season. You're running out of time for football season. And you need as many perspectives as you can get. Because once you take them all in, you can kind of average them out and get to the truth. That's the way this all works. That that That's the way this stuff happens. And you can have fun being a fan because you're not just listening to somebody that's spouting the truth to you. You kind of can sear everybody and get a general direction that they're going, hearing different viewpoints. It's not a bad thing. Anyway, thanks again for making the Locked On Almost podcast your first lesson every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Hope everybody has a good Wednesday. Wednesday is traditionally our lowest view day, so that's the reason I kind of wanted to talk about um, bowl games and things like that to try and see if anybody was interested in that indeed. So I hope everybody has a good week. We'll see you tomorrow, um, I think, with Brad Logan. Um, is going to do the know thy enemy or know your enemy because obviously there's not a necessary Louisiana Monroe person as well. So we'll see you then. Take care.